So chances are you're pretty comfortable using your laptop and iPad in the classroom, but you actually have a third district device that you probably don't use as much, and that is actually your Apple TV. Uh, chances are you use it for AirPlay, but that might be about it. But you can actually do quite a bit more. So the way that works is if you take out your black Apple TV remote, and I scroll down in my Apple TV, I'm gonna go to the Settings app, I'm gonna go to Users and Accounts, and I wanna add a default user. Now it does give me the option to sign in if with my iPhone. If I have an iPhone that's connected to the same uh, PSD Pattonville District Network, then I can use that to simply physically move my iPhone next to that Apple TV, and it will transfer my Apple ID from one device to the other. Uh, but if I'm not connected to the district's Wi-Fi or I just want to manually sign in, I can tell it to do that as well. From here, I'm going to enter in my personal Apple ID. And then I'm going to hit continue. And here it's going to ask for my password. Now again, this is your own personal Apple ID password. And if you need to change back and forth between capital and lowercase letters, you can do so here. Now once you're done, you're going to go ahead and sign in. Now from here, it's gonna send you a text message to your personal device. This is a six digit code. You need to tell it to allow and then enter in that six digit code. Again, using the same Apple remote. So now from here, I'm officially logged in to my personal Apple ID on my Apple TV. So what does that allow me to do? So now that I've signed in, my name should show up at the top and now I should have the ability to use that Apple ID to purchase apps whether they be free apps or paid apps. So what I can do here is I can go to my app store icon. And when I access the app store, I now have the ability to download apps. So if I hit continue, there's a lot of different apps to choose from. Now, first of all, you're gonna find pretty much every streaming service out there. So uh, there is a chance that maybe you have some content that you like to use from Netflix or um, things like that, and you could go ahead and install that on your own. Or uh, what I would recommend is to do something like the YouTube app. So if I use YouTube, and you should see a big button that says Get. And when I click Get, it says, hey, do you want to download this for free? I say, sure. And it's going to go ahead and download this to my device. Now it's going to ask for my Apple ID password again. Log in. Now it will probably ask you the first time, do you want to require this password every single time you download an app? Uh, maybe every 15 minutes or don't keep asking me for this password, that's up to you. And then it will go ahead and download this app to my Apple TV just like it would anything else. Now while that's cooking, I'm gonna go ahead and go back and I can scroll down and you'll find all kinds of other apps in here. They're organized by category, you can get things like uh, the news, they have games, they have cooking shows. Um, you can find Calm apps for uh, things like Calm.com or uh, Relaxation. There's just some uh, screensavers, all kinds of different apps that you can download and set up on your Apple TV. And again, all I would have to do is simply go to one of those apps, click on it, and hit Get to be able to get it. And it'll install it on my device. Now, once I'm done installing, if I hit the menu button a few times to go back out, I will now see these new apps installed here and I can simply tap on one to open it up and check it out. So some of these may have their own login, some of these may have things where you can log into your own account, but it's a way to actually use an app instead of having to airplay every single time to your Apple TV. Now, one of my favorite options or things to do is YouTube. And what YouTube does is if I sign into my YouTube app, this allows me to actually sign in on my TV using my Google account, uh, which again, I tell it to sign in. It's gonna ask me to enter my Google account. And when I do that, it will show me my YouTube history on my Apple TV. So if I have favorited videos or saved videos in YouTube, they will show up and be easily accessible directly through the app without having to airplay or anything else. They're gonna play much smoother this way with far fewer options. So that's just a couple options you have to use your Apple TV to go ahead and install apps uh, as a third device in your classroom.